Hello and welcome. I'm Sophie Boyer de la Girode and I have the pleasure to be here with Elkin Velasquez, who is the regional director of UN Habitat. Uh, we are discussing today the topic of future cities and uh, how ICT infrastructures can be further expanded and modernized to make cities become digital and smart. Uh, Mr. Velasquez, how is your vision about uh, the smart integration of technology for the future of our urban aggregates? From our perspective, this is uh, something that uh, will happen definitely in all cities of the world. Uh, they will become digital. Now, the path towards a digital city is something that we need to look into uh, carefully in terms of the details of that. I can tell you from our experience and evidence from the UN Habitat that some cities can advance very quickly, but others will, will need really to come back to the basics, to the ABC. Um, to create an enabling environment for a digital city. Let me share with you uh, anecdotes. Mayors, some mayors in some cities in the world come very often to say, hey, we need uh, 100 tablets, we need 1,000 uh, laptops, uh, because we want to become a digital city. And uh, it's not about that. It's not about the hardware is really about uh, how to, through policy, through planning, uh, through good management, through good governance of the city, we are able to create an enabling environment where afterwards IT companies and uh, all, I would say, digital stakeholders uh, can uh, work together towards uh, making uh, life in cities easier uh, from different perspectives. That's what we think about that. Uh, we're here at Wise Media's Third America Summit and in your speech you were mentioning that uh, of course going this route towards digital cities, um, policy makers, public authorities need to take into consideration that there's also the risk of a digital divide to, to add to the already uh, social divide that is uh, existing in many of the of today's cities. Uh, could you illustrate what UN Habitat is doing about this uh, uh, and uh, how you plan to uh, inspire? One of the things uh, we are very worried about is uh, inequalities in cities. We do think that uh, a city has to be able to offer opportunities and of course basic services, access to basic services for all. Uh, in all means uh, paying particular attention to the poorest in the city, the left behind. And that's a really a huge responsibility for uh, national governments, for local authorities, but also for, I must say, private sector, NGOs, for all members of our society. And uh, one of the things we need to take really with, with I mean, uh, um, in a with care is how we introduce IT in, uh, in a city, in uh, an urban society, particularly in uh, less developed countries and uh, middle income countries. Uh, in those urban areas from uh, middle income countries, for instance, we have huge urban inequalities, huge urban divides. We need really to be smart enough to utilize ITs to reduce that divide to reduce inequalities, not to increase them. And um, uh, w from evidence, we see that in some cities, it might work very well. In other cities, some things need to be fixed, needs to be corrected before introducing, or at the same time, we introduce uh, ITs. There is huge potentials, but uh, provided we are able really to do it smartly, uh, from the perspective of uh, policies, integrated policies that are going to, to facilitate uh, the access of uh, poorest people to basic services but also to opportunities. Do you think that uh, people will continue going to, moving to cities, whatever the future will bring in the next decade? Uh, definitely so. It's not that we think, is that uh, the, the trend, the global trend is that we are going towards a much more urban uh, world. This is unavoidable. I know that for some people it's not uh, good news, but uh, believe me, 
for a lot of poor people in the world is uh, really good news because the city is the, the place where uh, poor people can access uh, faster opportunities and uh, basic services. If you are um, the, the head of a family in a rural area in uh, Brazil, you would like to come to Rio or to go to Sao Paulo because you want your son, your daughter to access to good education, to uh, health. And the cities can offer this because of the phenomena of uh, economies of scale. And that's what we are uh, seeing all over the world, is that uh, more people from rural areas are coming more and more to cities to, to access uh, services. This is also a phenomena um, of uh, economic growth. We have seen uh, over the past years that uh, uh, countries grow growing economically are countries also utilizing smartly the urbanization dynamics. So uh, if this is something unavoidable, we have the chance, the opportunity to do it uh, properly through good planning of the city, good governance, good management. Mr. Velasquez, how do you think that the modernization of ICT infrastructures and the use of technology will support uh, the development of sustainable urban aggregates? Sustainable cities uh, are the ones that are going to offer opportunities for all, including the, the poor people in the city. And uh, believe me that uh, this is the main challenge, mainly in middle-income countries and uh, poor countries. And that with ITs we can go faster, we can accelerate the process because we, we know that IT uh, technologies can help us to go to economies of scale and uh, to facilitate access to everyone in the city, access to health, access to education opportunities, access to uh, what uh, for us is going to be a, uh, one of the most important assets in the city, even at right, mobility. And with uh, ITs uh, utilized in a smart way and uh, after a joint work between uh, IT people and of course mayors, urban planners, urban developers, uh, citizens, uh, we can really find a tandem, that, uh, a positive tandem that is going to support this path of uh, cities towards sustainable development. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Velasquez. We wish you all the best with the ongoing work of UN Habitat. And uh, thank you to everybody who follow us. Greetings from Rio.